Welcome back to Security Simplified. SSR stands for Server-Side Request Forgery. They're a type of vulnerability that happens when an attacker can send requests on behalf of a victim server, and this allows attackers to pretend to be that server on the network. Using the ability to forge requests from trusted servers, an attacker can now conduct all kinds of attacks on the network. Depending on the permissions given to the vulnerable server, an attacker might be able to read sensitive files, make internal API calls, and access internal services like admin panels and databases. SSRFs happen when servers need to send requests to obtain external resources. For example, when you post a link on Twitter, it would need to fetch an image from that external site to create a thumbnail. This is normal behavior. But if the server does not stop users from accessing internal resources, SSRF vulnerabilities occur. To prevent SSRFs, you will need to validate the user supplied URL. Depending on the external resources you are trying to fetch using that endpoint, you can either implement a whitelist or a blacklist to filter the URLs. First, you can check if the URL belongs to an approved whitelist if you know where you need to fetch your resources from. For example, if you're only fetching images from a particular server, you can limit requests to that IP address or that host name. On the other hand, if you need to allow users to fetch resources from arbitrary locations, you need to use a blacklist to restrict access to, internal, um, to sensitive internal resources. And whether you're using a whitelist or a blacklist, here are some tips to help you implement them correctly. First, if you're using a whitelist, make sure that you fix open redirect vulnerabilities within the whitelisted domains. If attackers find an open redirect within a whitelisted domain, they can request a whitelisted URL that redirects to a restricted internal URL instead. And make sure that the regexes that you are using are properly designed. For example, a weak regex pattern that simply checks if a URL contains the legitimate domain can be easily bypassed with these URLs. On the other hand, if you are using a blacklist, make sure that you are accounting for different encoding schemes. For example, does your blacklist filter out the same URLs but in hex, octal, door, URL, and mixed encoding? And does it account for both internal IPv4 and IPv6 addresses? A way that attackers can bypass blacklists, even when they are well designed, is by using redirects. Attackers can use URLs that they control but redirects to the blacklisted address. For example, they can host a page that redirects to the local address like this. This way, when your server requests the attacker's page, it is actually redirected to a restricted internal address. You can prevent these type of attacks by disabling the support for following of redirects in your web client. Another way attackers bypass blacklist protections is by modifying the DNS records of a domain that they control and make it point to an internal address. For example, they can create a DNS A record and make attacker.com resolve to a sensitive internal address. Now when your server requests attacker.com, it will think that the domain is located at the internal address and access that address instead. So when you are validating domain names, you also need to make sure that user-provided domains does not resolve to an internal IP address. And that's it for today's security lesson. Thanks for watching.